الحمد لله الحمد لله واهب المنن والصلاة والسلام على صاحب السنن سيد العرب والعجم وعلى آله الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم تنزيله هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين صدق الله العلي العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل ما جئت به من العلم والهدى كمثل الغيث الكثير أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام إن شاء الله تعالى I just want to present the principles of Islamic education When I say Islamic education, I mean education presented by all the prophets because they're all taught the same way. And this education is divided into two segments. The first segment is called at taqweem The second segment is called at taalim at taqweem what ta'alim? It's very easy to retain. There's two ways if you don't know Arabic. At taqweemu, what ta'alim? So these are the two segments of Islamic education. At taqweem comes from, from the word aqama yuqimu, qiyam, istiqama. So at taqweem the first section is concerned with raising the human being to become upright. That is the first objective in Islamic education. To build the human being. Knowledge Giving knowledge and wisdom comes after that. But we don't start by imparting wisdom and knowledge to someone who is not upright as yet. So that is the first objective of Islamic education, a taqweem. That taqweem also has two steps. It consists of two steps, taqweem. And ta'aleem also consists of two steps. The two steps in taqweem, the first step, that's what I mentioned at the beginning of the ayah, yatlu alayhim ayatihi. To revive the heart of a human being. A revival of the heart. Ihya al qalb. Because Islamic education is based on the heart and not the mind. So the word aql, which mistakenly always translated as reason or mind or intellect, simply means intelligence. But intelligence of the heart and not intelligence of the mind. And God clearly makes it, uh, states that in Surah Al-Hajj. أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا أَوْ آذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارٌ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tell them, let them travel over the land, let them travel across the earth, so that they may acquire a heart which has intelligence. Qulubun ya'aqiluna biha. That's why we said, it's the intelligence of the heart that Quran is concerned with and not the intelligence of the mind. So that puts the Islam education at the opposite spectrum of the Western education, which is based on the intellect and reason, as far as it goes back to ancient Greece. So it's a two different methodology. So therefore, it's all based on the heart. Aqlu al qalb. La aqlu al mantaq. So, first thing is to revive the heart of the learner, one who is seeking to know. Because we are, we are, we are created to know. That's the purpose of our creation. Because you can't worship God if you don't know him. So if you said, I created the jinns and the human being to worship me, to know me, as Ibn Abbas says, illa liya'buduni, illa liya'arifuni. That's Ibn Abbas' translation of the ayah. I created the jinns and the human being just to worship me. He said, just to know me, al-ma'rifa. So that becomes the purpose of our creation, of our existence, to know God. But that knowledge, as I said, begins by first reviving the instrument that acquires knowledge, and that's the heart. Because the heart dies. The heart gets sick. If it gets sick, it needs to be healed. If it dies, it has to be revived. There is the story of Abdul Malik bin Marwan, the one of the earlier kings of the Umayyad uh, <coughs> dynasty. He came to Medina on a visit and paid a visit to the scholar of Medina of that time called Sa'id bin al Musayyab. He said to the scholar, the king, Khalifa, he said, something happened to me, I don't know what it, what it means. When I do something good, it doesn't make me happy. When I do something wrong, it doesn't make me feel bad. So the scholar said to him that, Your heart is completely dead. Yes. Your heart is not responding anymore. It's not responding to good. It's not re responding to wrong either. So the heart. Because a living heart is the heart that responds. It responds to beauty. It responds to kindness. It responds to knowledge. It responds to light. By opening up. And responds to evil and darkness also by contracting. So it closes to darkness and opens up to light. That's called a living heart. So this is the first step in Islamic education to revive the heart of the seeker, the pursuer of knowledge. Once the heart is revived, I'm just cramming it to make it as short as possible. Once the heart is revived, <clears throat> then you go to the next step, next step of taqweem. Ta'lim hasn't come yet. Revival of the heart, then it's called tazkiyatun nafs. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakihim to purify their soul. Because an, a soul that is unpurified cannot acquire knowledge properly. Your soul will always be on your way, an obstacle. 
So you have to purify the soul. So tazkiyah to nafs. That's the second item. In taqwim. <coughs> and this tazkiyah to nafs, purification of the soul, also is concerned with seven attachments that every soul has. The seven attachments are mentioned in one singular one single verse in Surah to Ali Imran. Allah says, Zuyina Linas, Hubu Shahwat, Minan Nisa, Walbanin, Walkanatil Mukantarati Minad Dahabi, Walfiddati, Walkail Musawamati, Wal Anami, Wal Harith. ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب الله said seven things are, are human beings are made to love with lust الله الله حب الشهوات the first one is attachment or lust for spouses Second one, children. Is that obstacles? Third one, gold. Fourth one, silver. Fifth one, horses, if not cars or today. Sixth one, cattle. Seventh one, farming or land. These are the seven things that we all are attached to. And God is not saying that do not love these seven things. He's saying that love them in the right way. Love them not with lust. Love them with iman. Because there's a love of iman and there's love of lust. So love your children out of iman, not out of lust. Love money out of Iman. You seek money, you pursue money, you, pro you work for money. Nothing wrong with that. Because your aim is to have a better life. Because your aim is to worship God in a better condition. And your aim is to spend in the word of God. That's the right way of loving God. Of, of loving money. But loving money out of lust is a... Is a it's a completely different thing. Just briefly, these are the seven attachments. So when we, when we speak about tazkiyah to nafs, purification of your soul, is to purify the soul from these seven attachments. And when that is done, then the first part is done. Taqwim is done. Then now we actually go on to ta'aleem. Acquisition of Marifa. A whole of Kauli had a stuff for Allah in Nafsi Walk. Muhammad Nafsi Takwa, Tawali, Ozaki Hafa in Naka and Takhil. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده سيدنا ومولانا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين. So the second section تعليم after تقويم as the story of سيدنا عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه. One day he came across an ayah in سورة الأحزاب. And the ayah speaks about وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بِغَيْرِ مَا اكْتَسَبُوا فَقَدْ اِحْتَمَلُوا بُحْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا وَبِيلًا Those who hurt believing men and women for what they have not done such people are carrying an awesome sin. So he said to, he came to another sahabi 
called Ubay ibn Ka'b, the scholar of Quran. He said to Ubay, this ayah concerns me. He said, because when I go to the market, I see people doing something wrong, I hit them. And this ayah means saying that those who hurt believe in men and women. And I'm worried that maybe uh, this ayah applies to me. <laughs> so Ubay said to him that, no, it doesn't apply to you. Inama anta muqawwimun wa muallim. He said, you know, it doesn't apply to you because you are somebody who is making people be upright and also teaching them knowledge. So inama anta muqawwimun wa muallimun. So at taqwim wa ta'lim. So ta'lim is the acquisition of knowledge of the book and wisdom. So I said, وَيُعَلِّمْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ الْكِتَاب وَالْحِكْمَةَ Knowledge of the book and wisdom. But it takes a very long time just to go into what the difference between wisdom and knowledge. And they are different naturally. Mention them separately. Knowledge is one thing. Not wisdom is another. But this is what God has given to every single prophet and messenger. These four items. The responsibility is yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakihim wa yuallimhum al kitab wal hikmat wa yuallimhum ma la yalamun. And it'll teach them what they know not. Because knowledge has a beginning, it doesn't have an end. Imam Malik, the law ta'ala anhu, the founder of Maliki Madhab, the Imam of Medina, he had a student called Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, who himself became a very famous scholar of hadith. He said, I spent 10 years with Malik as a student, 10 years. Eight years I spent just learning how to have a good character. Eight years out of ten. Eight years. I was with Malik. All I'm just learning his manners, how to have a good man, how to have an upright character. He said, I spent two years to acquire knowledge, to learn his book, Muatta and to learn hadith, and to learn other, other, other subjects. Two years compared to eight years. He said, taqweem should be longer than ta'lim. Ta'lim doesn't take long. It takes you longer to acquire knowledge because you aren't ready. That's why. If your heart is ready, only it takes a moment sometimes. A moment, not even a day, you will have knowledge. God said, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهِ Have taqwa and Allah himself will teach you. Taqwa is taqweem. Be upright. Be righteous. And God himself will give you knowledge. So it takes us longer because we are not prepared. Because we aren't upright. Because our heart is not in the right condition. That was the case of the Sahabas. And he, so Abdul Rahman al Mahdi said, reflecting back, he said, I wish I had spent all the 10 years just learning Adab. Forget about seeking knowledge. I wish I spent all of the 10 years just be with him and learn his manners and try to be upright. Because knowledge will come to you the moment you are upright, either from a human teacher or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So Islam education is just these four items. The first one, remembrance of God, which brings the heart to life. The second one, tazkiyatun nas, to purify the soul. The third one, to acquire wisdom. The fourth one, to acquire knowledge of the book. 
ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم اللهم انا نسالك موجبات رحمتك وعظائم مغفرتك والسلامة من كل اثم والغنيمة من كل بر والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما والحمد لله على كل حال اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تلبسه علينا فنضله واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم يا رب جبريل وميكائيل وإسرافيل فاتر السماوات والأرض عالم الغيب والشهادة أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون اهدنا لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقة إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارض عن ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن الصحابة وعن التابعين وتابع التابعين اللهم انصر الدين واخذ العدو اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذ من خذل الدين اللهم انصر من نصر المسلمين واخذ من خذل المسلمين اللهم ألف بين كلمة المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين يا ذا الجلال ويا ذا الجمال ويا ذا المعالي عليك اتكالي أقم الصلاة